And Bob, do you, you know, we're talking about interoperability and all these capabilities of lighting. Because lighting is ubiquitous, you touched on this a little bit earlier, do you really see lighting as the gateway to the creation of this smart building or intelligent building when not only can lighting perform the way that you're talking about, but we can have integration with building management systems and security systems and fire alarm. Do you believe that lighting really is the gateway to that? I do. Um, and again, I believe that's largely because it provides much more precision in localization and activity estimation that is available from other technologies. It also can localize and track the activity of people who are wirelessly attached. Um, it can also do it in environments where security is an issue and you don't necessarily want to have a lot of wireless communications. Right. Um, and also it will meet a need, I believe, that's going to become important in the future uh, as uh, Li-Fi or visible light communications takes its place in part of a high bandwidth solution for much more ubiquitous high-speed datacom uh, as we continue to consume uh, our RF available spectrum uh, by people that deme uh, demand better connectivity more often. And so we see uh, lighting complementing uh, RF systems for this kind of capability. And so I see lighting as enabling on a number of fronts. Um, the properties of light, color tuning, intensity, directionality, improving the overall health and well-being and productivity of people. Well, that's something that lighting has always strived to do and lighting designers have always worked to provide. But now the sensing capabilities of lighting and being able to automate some of that capability um, to commission the lighting system automatically and provide these services appropriately. Um, lighting's gonna play an active role in doing that pretty much by itself because it can do all this now by just taking a look at how light is transported around a space. Whereas people are trying to do it by looking at how RF frequencies are transported around a space. We can do all this with light transport. Wow. And Bob, you talked a little bit about some capabilities lighting has today where maybe the output of the light can be tuned to maximize performance of an employee or a student or healthcare outcomes. Could you just touch on briefly what you see actually happening today? And if you think there are positive developments in that front of how lighting can positively impact consumers, employees, or, or students? We're seeing a lot of that work right now going on in some places. I'll take the educational example, uh, the ability to set the color temperature uh, of the illumination and the brightness of the illumination in the classroom environment has been tied uh, in multiple studies to educational outcomes in students. Um, there's em more emerging work in looking at the color tuning of light uh, in healthcare environments that are able to effectively improve patient sleep uh, at night and that's of course tied directly to the ability of them to recover in a hospital environment. Uh, there's research now going on at low levels that are tying spectrum and management of spectrum to uh, treatment of psychiatric disorders, also tying it to uh, the ability to reduce the amount of pain medications that are used with people uh, during their time in the hospital. But mu much, much more needs to be done because what we frequently talk about and, and some of our uh, faculty team members talk about is evidence-based lighting benefits. Right. So, we see exciting things happening. We see all kinds of potential for spectral management and improving human performance, uh, educational outcomes and healthcare outcomes. Um, but there needs to be much more funding and a much larger concerted effort to put a sound scientific basis behind this potential uh, that will drive overall benefits and better outcomes and better business models. Uh, for healthcare, and I think it's a it's a great area for opportunity. But we're at the very beginning stages of that right now, and uh, we today don't have the data that allow us to go to a facilities manager or a hospital and say, "Well, all you have to do is put in this very expensive color tunable lighting system with all the sensing capability, and you'll have a huge return on your investment, and healthcare will be better for all these individuals. Right. We might even be able to reduce medical error rates." Wow. And to be able to alert the nurses when the patients are moving around or become immobile. And they're going to say, okay, prove it. Right. Well, we can't. 
we have uh, a lot of little studies done here and there. We have some anecdotal information. Um, but there needs to be a large concerted effort on driving this kind of research. And it's going to take money. It's going to take time. Um, but I'm convinced based on the information that experts all over the world are starting to publish more and more on now. And fine, my, bear in mind, I'm not an expert on healthcare and lighting. I'm, I'm a LED guy uh, and a semiconductor physics guy. Um, but there's enough of this interesting input popping up all over the world that I think that uh, experts properly funded to drive this understanding will really revolutionize the role of lighting in healthcare, um, person performance, uh, person effectiveness, productivity, and uh, this is going to be an interesting vector for the future of lighting. But it's going to mean that everybody's going to have to have color tunable lighting. Right. Just not warm on dim, and certainly just not sunrise sunset tuning but something that understands what the person needs, when they need it, what kind of spectrum is best for them to do their job. Oh, that really compelling stuff, Bob. It's said at the beginning, it's, it's hard to imagine trying to fit everything that lighting can do into a very small video podcast window, but I think that you did a great job of sort of illuminating uh, what some of those, those features are. So I really appreciate you taking some time today there's so many exciting developments that are happening so rapidly in the lighting and, and lighting controls world that is really difficult to keep up with. And I'm sure if uh, we have the chance to talk to you again in a few months, we'll probably learn about new developments that, that we weren't able to chat about today. So really grateful for you spending a few minutes to chat with us today. And we're, we're so grateful for your insight. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs>